Asalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Karibu tena katika kipindi chako cha Andashid. Mimi ni Fatma Yakub na mwanzangu hapa Abdulrazak. Mambo vipi? Wa sana alhamdulillah. Yaani leo nafuria sana kukuona. Niambie kwa nini? Kwa sababu yani hii kiote sijapata nafasi ya kukuona. Mimi nimejaribu kutafuta kwa mimi nitupa sana nikashangaa kwani umeamuaje? Hebu nisafiri tena. Yaani ni kwa sidi plan yake weekend hivi kwa sababu watu wengi weekend hiyo inaanza Ijumaa. Wengine hata tayari weekend zao zishaanza na nashukuru kwa wameshafika nyumbani, wameanza kututazama na ni vyema kabisa. Kwa hiyo una plan gani ya weekend? Weekend bado hata sijajua. Unajua? Sijajua bado. Mimi sasa weekend pengine nitakuwa na safari kidogo na nika kule Mombasa. Isha utatuletani? Ndio maji ya chumvi. Ya chumvi tayatengeza kule jikoni tu. Ah ile maji ya chumvi ni tofauti na ile ya kujitengenezea nyumbani. Lakini si umu inatumbo Haya basi ya lete tu basi Haya kwa hivyo leo katika kipili chetu chanyo Kwa kwa tunazugumzia zina Zina ni nile mambo ambao mnizi mungu haipendi Na unapata katika sasa hivi vijana wengi Mijingiza katika zina Sasa leo tunai shehe ambaye ni ita shehe Abu Bakar Swale Na kuna shehe Abu Bakar Ali Ambaye watangazia swala hili Watatambia ainangapu za zina ambazo tunazo Na nijinsi gani mtu ambaye anaweza kujilinda kutokana na zina na kama mtu pekee anaweza kuwa ameshafanya hicho kitendo cha zina ni vipi anaweza kutubu na amgeukia Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sasa ningependa kuongeza kuwa uh, kama vijana tuna mtihani sana kwa sababu zina imeenea kila mahali tukutana watu ambao tumekuzwa kwa njia tofauti alafu wakati tunakutana na zile tamaduni za kule ughaibuni zinatuingia pia watu wengi katika zina swali moja ambalo ningependa kama ni sahau nimesahau kumtangulisha mgeni wetu sara karibu katika kipindi na ndio pia tutawapa tutawapa wenzetu wapate fursa kukohoa kidogo wafahamike kwa hapo katika studio shaka tafadhali tukaanza naye Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Yaitu wa Abu Bakr Mashallah Alafu pia tunalugetu Ngepena pia nawe ujitambulishe Upate kusikika tujue kuwa upo Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Shukran sana kwa kuja. Social media itabidi tuwafahamishe kuwa wanaweza kutupata katika ukurasa wa Facebook at @andashid254 na pia atupisha za zake. Ndiyo ndiyo na pia atfuatia Rabela. Asante kwa nikukumbusha. Kwa hiyo shehe leo tunakukaribisha hapa katika kipindi chetu cha Andashid. Tunafurahi sana kukuwa nawe hapa na pia bwana Sani Abubakar. Kwa hiyo leo tunakuuliza vijana wengi katika muda wa sasa hivi vijana wengi wanasema wanakwenda na wakati. Sasa unapata vijana wengi wao wa Islamu na wenzetu pia wa Kristo wanashiriki katika kitendo cha zina. Na pengine wengine wetu tutangia katika hichi kitendo cha zina lakini hatujui. Sasa leo tungependa utueleze zina ni nini na tuna aina zipi za zina. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بلا كبوت زمودة إن شاء الله تنموان بمنيز منك سبحانه وتعالى أتوافكيه كويز نوم زوال أنبا وقامبا تمي أكسودية كونجيا مزوري يا باتك فهميكا zina kwa kweli ni pale watu wanapo, wanapo tekeleza tendo lile ambalo kwamba ni la ndoa nje ya ndoa lile tendo la ndoa linapotekelezwa lina nje ya ndoa ndio inakuwa ni zina ina maana kwamba kile kile kitendo cha ndoa kinapofanywa katika misingi ya ndoa inakuwa sio zina. Na zina yenyewe imegawanyika kulingana na wale ambao kwamba wanatekeleza. Kwa sababu tunachukulia mfano kwamba kuna watu ambao kwamba mtu ameoa pengine wewe ni mume wa mtu au ni mke wa mtu 
ukatekeleza ndoa nje ya ndoa yako ukatekeleza tendo la ndoa nje ya ndoa yako hiyo ni sampuli ya zina na kuna wale ambao kwamba hawajaoana pia hiyo ni sampuli nyingine ya zina na zote katika dini yetu ya Uislamu ziko na hukumu zake ambazo kwamba ni tofauti na hukumu ambazo kwamba zinajulikana tukigusia tu ni kwamba anapozini mtu ama anapozini watu wawili ambao kwamba wote hawajaoa katika sheria ya Kiislamu hukumu ambayo kwamba wanatakana wachukuliwe inakuwa ni kupigwa viboko mia moja kwa wote wawili wanatakikana wapigwe mijeledi mia moja ikiwa ni watu ambao kwamba hawajafanya nini hawajaoana na hapa napenda niweke wazi kwamba ikiwa ni wote hawajaoana na itakapokuwa pengine mmoja ameoa mwingine hajaolewa basi hukumu pia zitatofautiana kuna yule ambaye kwamba atapigwa mijeledi mia moja na kuna yule ambaye kwamba atatakikana apigwe mawe paka kufa ikiwa yeye amefanya nini ameoa nafikiri kwa sasa ni sema hayo inshallah nafu tutaendelea ningependa ndugu yangu Abubakar nikurushie swali hili kuwa kuna changamoto nyingi sana kama vijana wapata kuwa tuna rafiki zetu ambazo ambao si waislamu ambao tukikutana nao katika pita pita zetu ama katika mashuhuli alafu pia wana tamaduni ya kuwa siku hizi salamu imezidi kusalimiana kwa mkono imekuwa salamu ni kukumbatiana ndio mojawapo ya mitiani ambayo tunapata hivi changamoto hizi umezipata ama unazikwepa kwa njia gani alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'du assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah marata thani wa alaykum assalam wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah i'm very poor in kiswahili it's okay karia it's okay i'm very poor in kiswahili alhamdulillah the maudhu is very very important considering our contemporary world this world is becoming a very micro micro village you know we used to say global village the globe the globe is just like a what a small village now it's becoming more smaller and closer to us we can access so many things and this maudu alhamdulillah i have not understand what sheikh has said but i he has made a very good introduction and within the time frame we are going to say something about uh, what zina is and how we can avoid zina from the light of uh, the Islamic perspectives. Thank you. So, uh, before we go too far, we have Sarah here. So, according to the Christ Christian perspective on uh, zina, so what do Christianity tell us about uh, zina? Ana shukuru wakuni karibisha, kuzungumzia jambo hili. Hakika katika wa Christo, vijana haswa uwa tunafundishwa jinsi tunavyoishi vema jinsi Mungu alivyotuumba tuwe waminifu katika mili zetu hata wale ambao katika wako katika ndoa ni vema wajitunze maana yake ndoa ni takatifu ukienda nje ya ndoa umetenda dhambi ambao si nzuri kwa Mungu na sasa katika vijana sasa vijana wengi wamejiingiza katika mambo mengi ambayo hata tuelewi yanatokea wapi rafiki shabada anasema ni majaliwa ya Mungu tu Mungu ameingilia wapi na mambo yako unayofanya katika giza kwa hivyo unasema kwamba katika Kikristo uh, wanakatazwa kushiriki katika tendo la ndoa kabla ya kuana kabisa haikubaliwi katika hata Biblia hata walio walioishi kitambo haikubaliwi na hizi campaign ambazo wanaona kuna kanisa zingine wanasema safe sex wanasema tutumie contraceptives so hiyo hizo kanisa unataka kuniambia kuna kanisa tofauti ambazo pingine zinakubalia kushiriki lakini ikuwe safe ama ni tu wajua katika tuseme kwa mfano Kenya sasa uh -huh. inavyoelekea sasa upata muhubiri anasema ni vizuri mwenyewe anasema ni vyema tuletee hii topic kaweza kuizungumzia hadharani uh -huh. ione kama italeta 
uh, itaweza kusaidia vijana uh -huh. lakini wengine wana kwamba hii ukileta katika kanisa tuseme ukileta hivi uh -huh. haitakuwa vyema ni yani tu zungumzie mahali penye mtu anaweza haitaleta changamoto mingi sana hasa ukielewa kimawazo kwa hiyo ningependa kuhakikisha kalima kidogo uh, katika huu mkondo wa kuzungumzia kinga kutokana na magonjwa na kinga kutokana na na mimba isiyokusudiwa ningependa utuarifu mtazamo wako ni upi na hukumu ya Uislamu juu ya kutumia kinga katika kufanya mambo kama yale ya shughuli za ndoa wakati watu wako nje ya ndoa ama hata ndani ya ndoa uh, tunapozungumzia masala ya kutumia kinga Nadhani haya ni masala ambayo kwamba ni masala ya kuletwa mm -hmm. na ni masala ya wale ambao kwamba tunawaita ni western Aha. people. Na. Haya ni masala ambayo kwamba hayajafungamana na tamaduni na mila za Kiafrika. Mm -hmm. Hayajafungamana na mafundisho ya Kiislamu kwa sababu katika Uislamu kuna njia zile ambazo kwamba zimekubalika kupitia hadithi ambazo kwamba ni za Kiislamu mm -hmm. walivyokuwa wakipanga maswahaba wakipanga uzazi uh -huh. na njia hiyo ilikuwa sio njia ambayo kwamba ni ya kutumia kinga mm -hmm. bali ni njia ambayo kwamba ndio sunna iliyosisitizwa ni kwamba watu watakapokuwa katika starehe zao zile kwa sababu watakuwa wameshaelewana kwamba ni mume na mke wameelewana mm -hmm. na wamekubaliana pengine kwa sababu moja na nyingine hatutaki mtoto kupengine kwa muda huu yeah. kwa hivyo itakuwa bibi anajua na bwana anajua mm -hmm. kwa hivyo watafanya kile kitendo lakini itakapofika pale ambapo mwanamume anatakana kufika kileleni basi yule mwanamume atafika kileleni kwa nje. Sasa ningependa tuzungumzie hili swala la vijana. Naam. Vijana ambao hawajaingia katika ndoa kutumia <coughs> hizi mbinu za kupanga uzazi. Naam. Uh, mtazamo wako ni upi kuhusiana na hili swala? Nadhani katika nadharia yangu ni kwamba masala ya ngono ama masala ya tendo la ndoa kwa vijana ni swala ambalo kwamba halina nafasi kabisa. Mm -hmm. Kwa sababu kila kitu kina wakati wake. Angalia yale madhara ambayo kwamba yanasababishwa pengine na vijana kujiingiza katika matendo kama haya. Kuna madhara mengi. Utapata msichana pengine anaweza akaweka ujauzito ikamkatiza elimu yake. Kuna maradhi aina tofauti tofauti ambayo kwamba yanafungamana na haya matendo ambayo kwamba sio maamrisho ya Mwenyezi Mungu Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Kwa hivyo tukiangalia yale madhara basi tunaona moja kwa moja kwamba ni vizuri kabisa vijana wakirudi katika mafunzo ambayo kwamba ni ya dini kila kitu kiko na wakati wake kuna wakati ambao kwamba utafika utatakikana uoe na ningependa tu kusema kwamba katika dini ya Uislamu ikiwa kijana anajisikia damu inachemka bora damu inachemka yeah. basi na yuko tayari kuoa mm -hmm. anatakikana aoe hakuna umri bora ameshabalekh na ako na uwezo anaweza kaoa anafaa ni lazima kwake aoe naam kwa hiyo abu uh, abiraza fikira hii <coughs> karibuni karibuni tutaka unatualika kwenye harusi yako anze kunipangia kwenye mada uh, shehe uh, bwana bubaka na uh, shehe wetu kuna ile swali ambalo watu wanasema kuna aina mbili za zina ambazo nazifahamu mimi kuna ile zina ya macho na kuna hii zina ambayo wanasema zina ya marashi wanasema wanawake hawafai kutumia marashi nikigeuza katika lugha ya kimombo ndo brother Abu Bakar mwingine atuelewe uh, uh, we have two types of zina the one i know of so you have this zina of the eyes and you also have this type of zina where they say if a woman wears this uh, scented like strong perfumes and everything is also another type of zina so my question is uh, can you kindly shed light on this scent for the women because most of the ladies nowadays wear these perfumes and colognes and also we use some of these body lotions and these body lotions they also have these strong scents so is it also zina to wear these lotions that has strong scents alhamdulillah uh, in the islamic law we have what we call sadda zari'ah 
Sad Zaria means to block any access that will commit crime or sin. Mm -hmm. And what is the justification of that is uh, a verse in Surah Al Isra. Surah Isra. Mm -hmm. That is, talks about Baru, Baru Isra. Uh -huh. The verse said, Wala taqrabu zina. Innahu kana fahishatan wasa'a sabila. Do not come close to zina. Innahu kana fahishatan. Because coming very close to zina is an act of immorality. Islam preaches morality. So he said, you should not come close to it. And it is a very bad way for someone to take zina as a way of life. Now, this coming very close to zina has so many interpretations. And part of that interpretation is that you should not um, make yourself available to anything that will attract, uh, that will attract you to, to commit zina. To, to commit zina. Uh -huh. And there are so many ways that uh, one can be tempted to commit zina. Mm -hmm. And part of it is that um, zina, according to the explanation of our scholars of uh, Tarbiya, they said the woman, she's the one, like she's the subject of zina. It's only when a woman protects herself, zina will not have room. Zina cannot be accessed. And so therefore Islam made it haram for a woman, for a Muslim woman, to come, to go out without having a complete Islamic uh, attire. She has to wear the kumbui, she has to wear the hijab. And she should not apply the perfume. And this application of the perfume is not mentioned in the Quran directly, but it is mentioned And the hadith explain that the Holy Prophet wasallam warned the Muslim women that if they are going out, they should put on their garment, the Islamic garment, the bubui, the fimar, and whatever, so, and they should not apply the perfume. So this brings me to the question, why are men allowed to wear perfume and not women in the Quran? Good, because as I explained, women, they are the, they are the subject of attraction. They, uh, they can easily tempt men to commit zina. Unlike men tempting women to commit zina. Yes. And Sheikh yes. will explain further, inshallah. Uh, I think I can add there. Yeah. Uh, whatever my brother is speaking is very right. And uh, in Islam, we, were, we have what we call rules of hijab. Rules of hijab. These are the rules that guide how a Muslim man dresses, how a Muslim woman dresses, how a girl dresses, how a boy dresses. Right together? Mm -hmm. So under those rules are the ones that are stating uh, the characteristics that a man can put on, mm -hmm. as well as the characteristics a woman can put on. Mm -hmm. And it is there that you will find that a woman cannot uh, put on transparent dress, a woman cannot put on a very tight dress. A woman cannot perfume herself. She should not wear what we call knocking shoes. And if you look at all these angles, you will see, as the Sheikh is saying, they are the ones that are making you go close to Zina. Because, let us give this example. We have two women. A woman who is decently dressed, maybe a buibui and hijab, and normal shoes, she's walking, no perfume, no, no nothing. And there's another one who has buibui and hijab, but maybe she's work, uh, uh, putting on knocking shoes uh -huh. and perfume. And perfume. They are trying right, together. To of Once the first woman, when she passes by, no one will notice. Uh -huh, yeah. But the second one, even if the, the shoes are not knocking, but the perfume, perfume yeah. will attract. Yeah. But and you remember, Sheikh, mm -hmm. you also said that uh, we have this zina of the eyes. Mm -hmm. Zina of the eyes, it has yes. nothing to do with perfumes. Mm -hmm. So what about this zina of the eyes? How do men control this zina of the eyes? <coughs> I think uh, when we go to that, mm -hmm. I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very, very clear in the Holy Quran that... Tell 
the believing men to lower their gazes and tell the believing women also to lower their gazes. So there is no bias there. Both parties here, either men or female, should lower their gazes. I yeah. need to add on to what you've said. Uh, uh, there is a Sahaba, I do not remember his name. He once said, I, I don't know, okay, I'll not quote someone, but you mm -hmm. can add on to that who yes. exactly it was. He once said that when you're walking behind a lion, it's better than walking behind a woman mm -hmm. as a gentleman. Uh, perhaps you can tell me who exactly that was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, also, Ngependa kukuliza Sara. Wewe kama mwanafunzi ambaye wasoma katika chuo kikuu, tuko katika ujana na wakati upo kale, kule shuleni kuna njia nyingi sana ambazo waizengia katika katika vishawishi vya kuingia katika zina. Mm -hmm. Kama vile tamaduni ambazo zimeanza kuja baina ya vijana, mtu anaona kuwa salamu ya kupeana mikono, mm -hmm. si salamu mpaka lazima kuwe na kukumbatiana. Mm -hmm. Alafu pia kuna mtandao wa kijamii. Hivi wewe waweza kujikinga vipi na na zina? ama na kuingia katika matamanio kama yale wajikinga vipi um, nashukuru kwanza mimi mwanzo jinsi nilivyokuzwa ni tofauti na jinsi mwingine maybe amekuzwa kwa mfano mie penye nilikuzwa sikuwahi kufundishwa eti ukumbatie mtu unavyompata <laughs> yani kwa mfano kijana wamkumbatia ni rafiki eh hey, vipi wasemaje unamkumbatia no. vipi jamani na huu ni kijana wa mchana wana mkumbatia kifua yako iko kwake uh -huh. si vizuri no. sasa mie naweza sema copycats kuna hivi vipindi ambavyo tunavyozi watch hapa soaps uh -huh. soap opera uh -huh. so na, yale ma, 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 maisha ambao wale watu wanayowafanya si ya kweli uh -huh. manake ni ya kushoot ya ku act uh -huh. so unapata vijana wengi wameiga ule mtindo uh -huh. sasa ambapo inaleta shida katika shule uh -huh. vio vingi sasa so, unapata mtu anasema ah naenda kulewa naenda kufanya hivi hivi vyote zinaenda kuleta kumshawishi aweze kuingiza katika mambo ya zina uh -huh. Na furai kwa umetaja kulewa. Kwa hivyo ningependa nikuulize uh, kuhusiana na kulewa na anasa ambazo wanazifanya vijana. Na sehemu ambazo wanaamiliana ziwe labda shuleni ama njiani ama katika sehemu kama sehemu ambazo wameenda kuburudika. Hivi unatoa wasia gani kwa vijana kama jinsi ya kujikinga na kutenda kitendo cha zina ama kukaribia zina? Mwanza kama Mkristo mimi ningependa kusema kwa wenzangu ambao wako vioni. Mm -hmm. Jinsi walivyofundishwa katika dini, masomo yale ya dini, wasi ya puuzi. Mm -hmm. Manake mungu hupitia katika shehe, ma, wa, 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 wa pasta, mafada, mm -hmm. masista, hupitia katika wa watu. Ilo no. waeze kufundisha. Mm -hmm. Nini mungu wasua anataka katika maisha yako. Mm -hmm. Kwa fana kisema hivi, fuatilia. Manaka uneza pacha vijana wengi wanasema wanafatilia. Oh, wako kanisani wanaimba vizuri wa kitoka huko. Mm -hmm. Ah, kwa gizo ujua nafanya nini. Wao na mungu peke yake. Mm -hmm. Sao nge penda chuku wa imiza, wafuatilia kabisa. Manaka hiyo ni maisha hako na mungu wako alie kuumba. Kasema, uwe mwaminifu jinsi nilivyo. Yeah. You be holy the way I am. Because yeah. you are a God. I created you to be holy. Ufuate maagizo. Mm -hmm. Na kiri hapo inelita kwa selifani. Apo ambapo Sara anasema hugging is not allowed, handshaking is not allowed. Kuna hadith flani ni meisoma, inasema, mtume um, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anashema unapu kusalimia mtu, msila muminza kwa kumambia sallamu alaykum, ni vizuri mwambia sallamu alaykum, mshika mkwana yu inakubalika. Nafikiri, dadangu hapo mechangani ya mamu. Nafikiri ni we unapu kusalimia huyu dada. Naam mpe mkono uh -huh. kwa sababu jinsi ya zenu ni moja hakuna uh -huh. madhara lakini sio wewe kumsalimia mwanamume kwa sababu hadithi uh -huh. ambayo kwamba imepokewa ambayo kwamba ni sahihi uh -huh. mtume Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam amesema inni la usafihu nisa mimi siwapatii wanawake mikono uh -huh. na ukichunguza mafunzo yake ni nini kwa sababu mwanadamu ama mwanamume ameumbwa tofauti uh -huh. Kuna mwanaume tu ile ule mkono tu basi itakuwa kila kitu kimekamilika. Aha. Naam, kwa hivyo kwa sababu hiyo nafikiri ni muhimu sisi kama Waislamu tujaribu haswa vijana na watu wengine tujaribu kuwaelimisha wale ndugu zetu ambao kwamba sio Waislamu ndio wasiwe wakiwa, wakawa na ile fikra kwamba tunawabagua. Manake mara nyingi mtu anapokupa mkono na we utaki kumpa mara nyingi kuna kuwa na ile fikra kwamba 
huyu pengine anajiona ni bora ama ni nini lakini ukikaa katika msimamo kama mimi ni Sheikh alhamdulillah na nakutana katika mikutano na watu wengi mtu nikikutana naye mara ya kwanza pengine akinipa mkono huwa naweza nikakubali lakini lengo ni ile kumfunza maana yake nitakubali nimsalimie lakini nitamuita kando nimuelezee ndugu yangu kuna kadha 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 kwa sababu hii ndio njia ambayo kwamba inatufanya tuwe karibu na tuwe pamoja sasa mimi na swali hili naam unajua zina <coughs> pengine kuna wengine wetu wameifanya sasa mimi ningependa kuuliza hukumu ya mtu ambaye amefanya zina ni ipi na kama kuna wale ambao wamefanya zina watarejelea vipi kwa Mwenyezi Mungu Kut kidogo kidogo shekhi naomba tafadhali kabla hatujaingia katika hilo ningependa kuuliza swali kuhusiana na jinsi ulivyokuwasema kufunika mkono wakati unamsalimia yeah. mtu hilo uh, ni jambo ambalo mimi mwenyewe kwa elimu ambayo niko nayo na hisi ni kama hai hai kwa kufuatilia ile hadithi ambayo inasema kuhusiana na kile ambacho kinatangua udhu mm -hmm. uh, lamsul mar'at bibat bibat nikafa mm -hmm. yani usi kumgusa mwanamke kwa naam kwa kiganja chako kinavunja udhu mm -hmm. na sasa yule mwanamke akikupa mkono wake wakati amevaa glovu ama akasogeza sleeve ya nguo yake kisha ikafunika mkono wake alafu akakupa mkono mm -hmm. kuna tatizo na hilo ama hakuna tatizo uh, nafikiri kwanza lazima tufahamu na kwamba katika masala ya Uislamu kuna madhab ambayo kwamba ni manne ambayo kwamba anakubalika no. there are four school of thoughts in Islam and uh, the word lams these four scholars all of them have uh, uh, given uh, different interpretations uh -huh. there is the one that says when you touch the woman whatever reason the wudu is broken mm -hmm. but Uh, another one says it depends on your, your intention. Uh -huh. Are you together? Yeah. So, and all these madhabs are there, and we practice them. It is only that we need to to look at it positively, because all these scholars they have uh, uh, interpreted the same verses, the same uh, hadiths, and some of them are teachers to the others. Uh, yeah. uh, that is the truth. So uh, about uh, if like me I'm uh, following Madhab Shafi uh -huh. Madhab Shafi whereby you cannot uh, greet a woman with your bare hands uh -huh. but if you cover there's no problem because it is not direct contact uh -huh. yeah So brother Abu Bakr what do you think about uh, the people who have already committed this zina do they still have a chance to come back to Allah uh, Alhamdulillah um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his names and attributes he is al-afu the, the forgiver he afu he pardon he overlook and al-ghafur he forgive and he is ar-rahim the merciful and at the same time he is al-wadud the loving so and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates to us about some people that have committed so many crime and they lose hope they despair allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that those who have who has committed so many crimes they should not lose hope from the rahma of allah so anyone who commits zina and he repents to allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept him allah will continue to accept the sinners until the sun rises from the from the west from the west And then there is a general hadith of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that says kullu ummati mu'afan illa al-mujahirun all my ummah are forgiven except those who will come openly and transgress god they commit blasphemy openly those ones their affairs rest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he so wished he will forgive them if he so wished he will punish them so there is the babu tauba for anyone who commit a uh, zina uh, if he comes back to allah allah will accept him there are some abayat of uh, imam al qahatani is one of the famous scholar fr from spain uh, he talks about uh, forgiveness that um, as far as someone 
will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as someone is also committing sin, we will not say this person is a disbeliever. We will not do a takfir. <coughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afuwan. He is merciful. And he also talks about that we should fear Allah. When we fear Allah, when the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to you, you will have the presence of Allah in you. The fear of Allah will catch you. And the moment you do that with sincerity, you repent to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who repent back to him sincerely, ulaika yubaddilu Allahu sayyi'atihim hasanat. Those people who repent and went back to Allah, their sins that they have committed because of their sincere repentance, Allah will turn those sin, sins, he will turn them to righteous work. You see how merciful, that's why I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghafuru, al-afuru, al-rahimu, al-wadud. Uh, sorry to interrupt a little bit. I'd like to ask you about uh, when we started for it. Uh, Sheikh Abu Bakr mentioned that uh, for those people who have committed the act of zina and this person is married, they will be punished by being stoned to death. Now, where is the door of forgiveness for such a person who has been stoned to death? Mashallah. According to Islamic law, uh, once you have committed a crime and you have evidences that has proven that you have committed this crime, that law will be executed. That one is very clear about laws. But in a situation whereby someone has committed zina and he was not caught, then that person should go back to Allah and repent and Allah will forgive him. And um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hate someone to commit something without in uh, behind the curtain and he will come and say I have done this someone committed zina and he came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that I have committed zina and the holy prophet turned his face he came to this side he said are you are you are you mad are you lunatic allah has covered you and you are coming to expose yourself so and for in sharia you cannot court someone as a uh, azani except you have four witnesses so uh, uh, catching a azani in islam is the most difficult offense that someone will be will be caught because you must have four witnesses and those four witnesses they must witness the act of zina without any doubt sure, sure. Would I be right if I said that the person who's been stoned, the married person who's been stoned to death, is punishment for zina, uh, is the punishment a way that they get expiation from their sins, or how exactly is it? Is that correct, really? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That is the act of expiation. Uh, because uh, I recall uh, one woman came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she said to the Prophet that I have committed zina and I've uh, become pregnant as a result of the zina. Are you together? So the Prophet wasallam said to this woman, go and give birth and then come back. The woman went, she went, she gave birth, she came back to the Prophet. She said, I've given birth. The Prophet said, okay, go and breastfeed your child. The woman went she breastfeed the child and then she come she came uh, back again then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said she was to, uh, she was you are supposed to dig a hole and then you stone her to death that is what happened and this is as a result of what it is the act now that expires you from your sins once done that that is done then you are free from that sin and that is same as what the sheikh was saying it is now true repentance because this woman was not seen. She was not seen. She was the one who went to the Prophet and said, I committed this act. Yeah. But okay, since we live uh, in a world <coughs> of temptations, no. so how can one avoid sinner? Maybe you can tell us the steps what can take you to avoid this sinner. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I have uh, <coughs> some, some ways, almost 11 of them, that one can follow. Inshallah, to avoid zina and will keep away from zina. Uh, one of it is Al Khawf Min Allahi. 
is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the gate of rahma, open even the gate of success in life. If you are having problems in your life, if you fear Allah and do istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your way too. So this khawf number one is very important. Number two, ma'rifatu tamma bi khuturat al fakhisha. You have to understand the the consequences of zina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish someone who is committing zina. And there is another consequence that one will, will encounter when he committing zina. He will, he will live in shame. People will not... Uh, yes. he, will, he, will, he will feel guilty. Uh -huh. He will feel that he is impure. Uh -huh. So that one also, if you have that consequences of zina that you will be like uh, maybe stigmatized among your your people it will make you to care, keep away from zina and number three you have to also understand that if you commit zina you have taken a debt if you did not repent because a zina then zina is a debt come out to dinner to done as you do so shall it be done unto you. They said, even if you do zina with the wall of your neighbor, one day your own wall will also be a victim of zina. So if you know this, that zina is a... A very young boy came to the Prophet wasallam, asking him to permit him to commit zina. Then the Prophet wasallam. Put his hand, is it on his shoulder or on his chest? Uh -huh. He said, My son, will you accept your daughter? You mentioned your mother, your aunt, your daughter, your sister to commit someone to commit zina with her? He said, No. Then why do you want to commit zina with the mother, the sister, the daughter of others? So he was uh, rebooked and he, he, he said, from that moment, I hate Zina to the core. Now, understanding that if you do Zina with others, it will be done to you. It will make you to keep away from Zina because you will be jealous for someone to commit Zina with your own relatives. And number four, if you commit Zina, it can also lead to that the brightness of your face will go away holiness that brightness you will look downcast if you know that one you will also not commit zina and number five basar. you have to lower your case number six you have to also keep away from interaction with opposite sex mixing up and that is why you see we have maintained this culture in our gatherings the muslim culture we have maintained this when we are having a gathering is it swala we have the upper side where women will uh, follow the jama'ah yes. and the lower side where the men will follow and i also believe we have the same teaching from the my christians brothers mm -hmm. inshallah i think mm -hmm. this is a very important mm -hmm. point to say that uh secluded <coughs> women from men interacting freely at the areas of worship and also uh, in in every other part where muslim men and women can get to meet each other uh secluding them from uh, from each other is also a way to make sure that we maintain the standards of morality and we it's not it's not at all a way of oppression of women and it's not at all it's just because uh, we respect our women so much and that's why we have those rules ningependa kwenda upande wako sasa sara kama kijana wa Kikristo na kwa sababu pia show hii inatazamwa na watu ambao ni Waislamu na pia wasiokuwa Waislamu. <coughs> Ningependa kwa manufaa ya watazamaji wote utufahamishe kuna jinsi gani za vijana wote kwa jumla kujikinga na zina. Kwa mfano ama vijana wote ambao wanatazama huku wangeza kujiepusha na mambo ya zina kama uh, kwa mfano umefuata dini mwanzo. Mm -hmm. Umjue Mungu, mm -hmm. mwogope Mungu mwanzo kama alivyokuumba. 
kisha ukisha mfuata kwa kama sisi wa Kristo tunasema ujifunike na damu ya Yesu mm -hmm. au kupitia Jesus mm -hmm. to be forgiven no. kwa mfano kama kijana amefanya dhambi umeona hii kweli nimeifanya kini tafanyaji nirudi kwa mungu, mm -hmm. sasa nile unajikiri, una, you acknowledge your sins, mm -hmm. and then you tell God to purify you, mm -hmm. to make you a new thing. Uh -huh. From there, unaweza kuwa una uji avoid, mm -hmm. uh, kwa mfano, ujiepushe na hile mambo ya naweza kufanya, kama ni ya kulewa, kama ni rafiki ya naweza kufanya, huu rafiki, na nifanya ni lewe, ah, siyezi tangamana nae, mm -hmm. nenda zangu, kama ni kuachana, muachana nae, manaki unataka maisha bora, Sasa tuko katika ile wakati wa lala salama kila mtu atakuwa na fursa yake Sheikh atatuambia mambo yake ya mwisho brother Ibra, uh, Bubakar na pia Sar lakini nakuuliza tuna comments kwenye Facebook Ndiyo ndiyo tuna comments kwenye mm -hmm. Facebook naona ndugu yetu kwa jina Iman James ametuma message akiuliza swali ni nini nadhani kwa ile post ya kwanza ambayo tulikuwa tumeweka kuhusiana na topic ya leo ambayo umesema uh, tunazungumzia zina kwa hivyo ni kama alipost mida ya dakika 30 iliyopita alafu pia tukiangalia katika post ambayo tulikuwa tuzungumzia mada ya wiki iliyopita uh, ningependa kusoma kutoka kwa uh, naona anasema anaitwa Abdul Qadir Tsumo Anasema mavazi sio mavazi tu. Katika dini ya Kiislamu bali tumefunzwa na mtume wetu jinsi ya kuvaa ili tuepukane na matamanio ya nafsi zetu ndio zina isiwe ya kukithiri na kumkosea Allah. Ni comment ambayo ameituma Abdul Kadir Tsumo kuhusiana na mada ambayo tulikuwa nayo wiki iliyopita. Naam, alafu ndio basi tu katika ukurasa wetu wa Facebook japo naona kidogo mtandao wa zingua uh, ndizo ambazo zimeza kutufikia zingine hazifunguki lakini inshallah tukipata ya wiki ijayo tutakuwa yenye kuzisoma insha Allah. Kama tunaenda kumaliza kipindi ningependa abu, brother Bubakar atupe mwenye yake ya mwisho kwa wale watazamaji ambao wanatuona pale nyumbani na pia Sheikh atupe yake ya mwisho kisha Sara. Now we we'll start with you Abu Bakar. What's your last word? Very very briefly. Uh, my last word that we 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 have to be God conscious and we have to manage the the the, the innovation, the contemporary innovation, we have to manage it and we have to be also very conscious of our religion. Nafikiri mimi kwa kumalizia, nitasema tu kwamba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alipoumba mwanzo, alimuumba Adam na kamuumba Hawa. Na kulikuwa na malaika kule na ikaulizwa, malaika ama maila ikakauliza Kwa nini unaumba katika ardhi watu ambao kwamba watakwenda kufanya ufisadi watakwenda kumwaga damu na mambo kama haya Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala aliwaambia wale kwamba yeye anajua yale ambayo kwamba wao hawajui Kwa nini akamuumba Hawa na Adam ni kwa sababu Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala alitaka kizazi kiwe ni chenye kuendelea lakini kizazi hiki kinatakikana kuendelea katika njia zile ambazo kwamba ni sahihi na njia zenyewe ni ndi, njia ambazo kwamba ni za ndoa na Uislamu unatambua hata ndoa za Kikristo. Maadamu ni ndoa, Uislamu unatambua hata ndoa za Kikristo na ndio maana hata ikitokea kwamba Wakristo wawili ambao kwamba wameoana wakisilimu wote hawafungishi ndoa nyingine katika Uislamu. Nafikiri yangu ni hayo. Mambo yake ya mwisho parting shots. Ah uh, mambo yangu ya mwisho kwa watu wote ambao wanatazama huku wamogope Mungu zaidi wajiheshimu <coughs> na wapende wenzio. Kipenda mwenzio wezi fanya zina. Yeah. Kabisa. Haya sasa imenifikia mimi ningependa kusema kwa wale wanaotazama nyumbani nimefurahia sana kuwa na brother Bubakar na pia shehe wetu hapa. Na pia ningependa tujifunze mawili matatu kwamba ndiyo tunaishi katika ile dunia ambayo sasa hivi ni temptation kwa kila mahali. Lakini pia ningependa kusema kabla ufanye ile jambo mtaje tu Mwenyezi Mungu. Mwambie tu Allah. Unajua pale unapomtaja Mwenyezi Mungu una, unaingiliwa ni ile uoga. Unapiga break. Unapiga <laughs> <laughs> Unapiga break kabisa. No. Kwa hiyo tujaribu kadri tunavyoweza tuacheni na zina. Uh -huh. 
na tujaribu kuishi katika yani kuna wale marafiki ambao tumesahau kuwataja kuna zile pia pressure Aha. so unaona marafiki zako wanafanya hivi na wapi unataka kufanya so Aha. tujitenge na wale marafiki tujiunge na wale marafiki ambao wanatuleta katika njia mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ni hayo tu mwisho kabisa ningependa kumkumbusha yule mtazamaji ambaye amekuja kwa kuchelewa na akapata tukiwa tumalizia ama tukiwa katikati akumbuke pia kutufata katika mtandao wa YouTube angalie show ambayo tutakuwa baadaye tumeidondosha pale ili upate man fa ambayo tumeyapata hapa kutokana na wageni wetu Sheikh Abu Bakar ndugu ya Abu Bakar na pia Sara naam ndio tu Juma inayokuja na tunawatakia weekend njema asalamu alaykum Allahumma <laughs> salli